אוקיי. All right, and welcome back to part three of this week's Yawa. I uh, wanted to touch on one thing really quick, which is we are changing things. We have been posting for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks uh, a post that says, hey, ask us your questions on Instagram and Facebook, and we're not going to be doing that anymore. So if you have questions, we want you to throw them in the comments on YouTube videos. Specifically, the Yawa videos are fantastic, easy for us to sort through, but we want to... answer the questions of the people that are actually watching these videos which are on YouTube so we're going to be changing that please throw your questions up in comments on YouTube yes and we are going to get started answering some more questions because we've got so many good ones and I know we're gonna run out of time and I hate that we are we have good ones I'm drinking journeyman distilleries last feather rye whiskey and this was a gift from Lee a customer and friend thank you very much you Let's I'm drinking started. a red beer because because you're red beerish because I'm a red beer fan from Nikki Jane on Facebook we are getting our puppy in a couple of weeks congratulations awesome that's exciting any advice on what the first few days weeks will look like we are off work for a week or so um, for a week so we'll be home and So good question uh, first of all I want to mention we have a couple videos on the Well, we have a lot of videos on our YouTube channel, but the one that I'm thinking about is like the day in the life of the puppy with Thunder. Yeah. We've actually got a playlist for Thunder. So it would be under that playlist uh, that talks about, you know, what a 24 hour day would look like for him. Definitely check that out as well as on our website. I've got a few articles that I've written about um, preparing for your new puppy, things to set you up for success with crate training and potty training and things like that. So those articles would be really good to read through and kind of have an idea of what you're you're going to be getting into. But I also want to mention, um, so you're off work for the first week, which yeah. is awesome. But I think that um, people do this a lot where they're like, well, we're getting a new puppy. So I'm going to take a week off. I've got some vacation time. Um, it'll be perfect. Or they get their puppy over the summer and they're a teacher. So they're off all summer long. And they make the mistake of having the puppy be out and part of everything all the time. And they don't do any crate training hardly for that first week or for the entire summer. And then rude awakening for your puppy when you go back to work. Absolutely. Um, or these people that have been having the opportunity to work from home during everything with COVID. Uh, then they have to go back to the office and their puppies are like, wait a minute, I haven't been crated this entire time. And now I'm being crated. This is beep. So... <laughs> Beep, 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 so, beep, beep, beep. So definitely make sure that you are starting out at home with your puppy on the same routine that they're going to have once you have to go back to work. So now you are right training. So you can let them out more often and have success and build off of that. Yeah, but, so for that next week, they can get better at their potty training for sure, but yes. they still understand the importance of crate training and that there will be crate time. Plan on a couple of sleepless nights. That's going to be part of it. Um, yes. And then as they get better, you need to challenge them. See how long can they sleep. Don't set timers to wake them up. Allow them to sleep. And then when they wake up, let them out to go to the bathroom. Now, some dogs are going to be needy. Some dogs are going to need to be close to you. Some dogs are going to be okay and need the lack of stimulants. Which I would actually point out. So Thunder was um, a puppy that had to kind of be put back in the back room. Yes. Out of, I don't want to say out of sight, out of mind. But if he couldn't see or hear what was going on, he was much... He was out of sight, out of mind for him. For him, yeah. yeah. It was easier for him to settle down. He is actually in the back garage right now. <laughs> Um, while we're doing this because he otherwise feels like he's missing out whereas Zephyr is in Sitting a crate right, over right next to us because if he's in the back room he cries the whole time because he misses us and he wants to be near us he doesn't have to be out but he wants to be with us just completely two different personalities so you have to figure out what's gonna work for your puppy absolutely um, so it's kind of cool that we are raising them and they're you know a little over six weeks in age apart but completely different personalities. Now, if this is your first time to the channel, guys, definitely hit that subscribe button right down here so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. This question we have got to answer because um, it's something that I think it's overlooked by a lot of people or misread by a lot of people. Okay. So Michelle Vasquez, which if I pronounced your name wrong, I'm sorry, especially because you're a top fan, boom, 
on Facebook. <laughs> hey, y'all. I have a 15-month-old Rhodesian Ridgeback RR, Ooh, cool. uh, intact male. He has an older brother, a seven-and-a-half-year-old Doggo Argentino. We have noticed that our younger dog- Doggo went- Argentino? I don't know. That's what it says. Looking it up. Okay. Uh, we have noticed that our younger dog, when playing outside, purposely runs his shoulders or chest into his brother. He also walks shoulder to shoulder with him and cuts him off or at least tries to. It's to the point that our other doggo has to stop and keep trying to walk a different direction. It's not a behavior we have seen before. We are working hard and trying to remind him not to do that. Our older dog gets frustrated. Is this something that can be a major issue down the road or is it just puppy play and we are overthinking it? So great question. You're actually being super observant and that's um, awesome. Your Rhodesian Ridgeback is 15 months old, starting to come. Ooh. Cool. Yeah. It's- Doggo Argentino. It's another breed. So it's a large, white, muscular breed of dog developed in Argentina, primarily for the purpose of dog big, fights. No, no. no I'm big, just teasing. Big game it looks hunting. like it would be a like a fighting dog. So um, athletic Big game hunting. Looking. And it looks pity. You a know what I mean? A little bit, yeah. But more... Longer built, necks, longer, longer legs, yeah. not so short and stocky, and including wild boar. So, um, similar to the Rhodesian Ridgebacks, or even like curs, fall into this category of big, muscly, strong dogs. That's really cool. Really cool. Foundation First, stock, Great Dane, Boxer, Spanish Mastiff, Bulldog, Bull Terrier, English Pointer. There's some of that leg in there. Uh, and Irish the Great Wolfhound. Dane, obviously. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> No, that's really cool. So the fact that you're being super observant and recognizing these things that your dog is doing, he's 15 months old. He's probably hitting about that testosterone driven sexual maturity, um, phase in his life. And he's, that's the, that's when the boundaries get tested. That, I mean, pushing it, the envelope, seeing what he can get away with. somewhere between 12 and 24 months and right around that 13, 14, 15 range is when we see it. And he's seeing what he can get away with. And he's trying to exert his dominance over your other dog. And he's pushing and he's testing. Um, You know, so he's bumping chests and rubbing shoulder to shoulder to see who's going to give. And your other. that's very, very, very subtle subtle. dog dog, subtle dog language. Yep. And it's subtle signs of dominance. And he's pushing your other dog around saying, hey, I'm the big dog here. You better move out of my way. And for now, your older dog is giving to him. He's saying, okay, I'm just going to go this way. Or, okay, whatever. I'm not going to push this. But if it keeps going and escalating, eventually your other dog could get, like you said, frustrated. And instead of giving to it and saying, well, I'll just go this way, then he'll be like, little boy, knock it off. And we have a dog fight on our hands. And And with two big dogs dogs like like that, that, it's a serious dog fight. A, they can seriously damage each other as well as whoever tries to break that up could get seriously bit. And then you've got big decisions on your hand of what you're going to do. Somebody got bit, especially if it's, you know, somebody outside of the family or something or little kids. So the fact that you're registering that this is probably not good behavior is really good. And a lot of people don't recognize those little subtle signs, even dogs putting their head on top of another dog's back or shoulders. You know, that's a dominance position um, or putting their paws up on their back. And, you know, even if their ears are pinned and their butts wagging and tails happy, it still is subtle dominance and people don't read it right. And that's when things escalate. They're like, I don't know what happened. They were just playing and all of a sudden they started killing each other. Well, they weren't (laughs) really playing. um, And it was Mm. just something that you weren't reading properly. And dogs have dog language and all of those little things that you're seeing are part of that. So, Nipping it in the bud, redirecting your other dog's focus. We talk about this a ton, and it is advocating for both, right? So it's not okay for the old dog to grump at the young dog. It's Which not it doesn't okay. sound like he's doing right not now. Yeah. Um, and it's not okay for the young dog to pester the older dog. You need to say to both of them, hey, psh, knock it off. Now, there is the the other mentality to that. You can say you can let them sort it out, but at what cost? cost? And At what cost? And like we just said, with those two powerful breeds, big dogs. Um, the cost could be big. Could be big. So yeah. stopping it and intervening yourself before it escalates to that point would be our recommendation. 100%. So thank you for the question. It was a really good one. Good luck. Keep us posted. So we have a quick question that I just want you to answer quickly. Got it. It's 
probably not going to be a quick question from Aaron Mumblu, which I think I pronounced your name right before. So I hope I got it right again. Um, Ethan, in a lot of the videos you talk about guiding, yeah. which states do you guide in and how does one sign up for or get to go on one of those guided hunts? Okay. So I guide in uh, South Dakota primarily. Um, I am doing this year and this is new. Okay, folks, this is new. I'm doing uh, quail hunts in Kansas and I am doing potentially a few limited spots, quail hunts in the panhandle of Texas. So those spots are open and what you need to be able to do is email me Say you want a guide that's as cool as me and and has a mustache. And has really nice dogs. And has, more importantly, has really nice dogs and access to birds. So um, the South Dakota aspect of things is booked up for this year, I believe, unless you're interested in a late season hunt. There are some spots for late season hunts, but I'm not 100% sure if those are full or not. So the guiding aspect of things in South Dakota, it takes a big group. We're talking eight to 10 people. You need eight to 10 people. If you don't have eight to 10 people, you don't have enough, period. The way our property works, everything is set up. You need a lot. That, again, you can email me if you're interested in signing up for something next year. We're pretty much booked South Dakota. The um, quail aspect of things, we need small groups. The exact opposite of South Dakota. We need two people. Three is the pushing the limit two people to come hunt. You get a buddy, come down, hunt with us. Um, and we've got a really cool operation for quail in Kansas, not very far from where we're at. And then the, the panhandle of Texas is looking insane. I talked to that guy actually today and he said, numbers are booming. So they are having good weather just like we are. I would um, just reach out to us if you are interested in some quail hunting. There's the potential to see a pheasant. The likelihood is small. Good job. That's what I've got. Email me. Email Email him. Email me. So this was a fun question from Christy Rains. I love the pic you posted recently of Nyx as a puppy. That was such a cute picture, kind of a throwback. Um, And it's on our Instagram channel if you didn't get a chance to see it. Or Facebook. What what did I say? Throwback? Yeah, it's a flashback Friday. That's the F. Oh, it was on Friday? Yeah. Oh. Whatever. I didn't post it. You did. So I don't remember these things. Throwback Thursdays. Is that what it is? Throwback Thursdays, okay. flashback Fridays, flashback I guess. Fridays. Uh, what a gorgeous boy. Well, thank you. Yeah, he was a cute little turd. Is there some reason why you are now breeding liver roan and black roan, but no liver white or black and white like Nick's? I know other breeders who avoid breeding the GSPs with white for versatile hunting, family dogs. So no, actually, there's not really any reason. Um, we actually had a female rogue that we kept. There's a small reason, but it's not a real reason. So Okay. So we actually kept a female rogue who was colored very similarly to Nyx. My mom actually got them confused all the time. Um, Even though I'm like, rogue and Nyx look nothing alike, mom. How can you get them confused? She's like, well, they're both black and white. Well, true. And they're mostly white based, but she ended up um, not working out for our program, but is now living with a really great friend of ours in Michigan, going to live her best life up in the grouse woods. Yeah. If you um, actually keep up with our Instagram lives, which happen on occasion, uh, you get to watch her do some roading with her brother, new New brother, brother, Cooper, Cooper. who's also from our program. Mm -hmm. But um, so, no, I love the white based dogs, whether they're black, whether they're liver, um, as well as the roan dogs or the heavily ticked dogs, really, they're all gorgeous to me. Um, But it just so happens that when you've got roan dogs. Roan's is a dominant character. It really seems to be um, prevalent in a litter. So then you may only get one puppy, maybe two puppies that have that whiter base. And because we're evaluating so many things, if everything doesn't indicate that that whiter base dog would be the dog to keep, then I have- Because we're not picking based on color. We're not. And um, we're basing that on a lot of other characteristics and it'll be like, oh, well, like I'm drawn to that whiter dog. Like I really would like to keep another whiter dog, but then this roan dog or heavily ticked dog has these other characteristics that make it a better candidate for our breeding program at that point, then I don't keep the whiter based dog. So hopefully in the future, we will have the opportunity for some more white based dogs um, in our program because we love them. We love them all. And as far as like versatility wise with hunting for. Um, They're flaring my ducks. That is crap. 
I um, heard that once. <laughs> once, probably more than once. Uh, but no. That's the number one. Uh, like I've gone on if, a few guided. If a guided hunt hunts, isn't going well, they're going to blame it on number the dog one, dogs. The number one thing the guide's going to blame it on yeah, the, the dogs. dogs. Yeah. Pet peeve. Anyway. The dogs um, out there too far pushing birds. Anyway, Nix has actually gone on a Every lot of- Every guy I've ever talked to is a friend of Larry the Cable Guy, so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Nix has actually gone on multiple waterfall hunts and has done a phenomenal job. Is great versatile dog. Uh, throw them in a blind, put a put a neoprene vest on them. That'll help camouflage them a little bit, but- Unless you're snow goose hunting and then he is decoy. Then he's a perfect dog. So, well, he's already a perfect dog, but- <laughs> <laughs> He's my dog. All right, let's go to the next question. And I think it was really funny because you actually mentioned our Instagram live the other day. And this next question has to do with our Instagram live. So Boom, good, Instagram live. Good Here job. We go. From Hound Horde, which I thought was also Hound, a really cool Hound Instagram. Horde. I remember them asking a question. Yeah, that's why I'm going to bring it up. Okay. Um, on the live, you asked if I will be running my coon hound. No, but we will be doing cold scent work and other adventures. Would love to hear your raccoon experiences. Also, how do you choose which dogs to take on a hunting trip? I'm going to have to say that coon hunting is going to be saved for another day. Okay, we'll come there's back. Not to, enough there's not enough time, time today. to talk about. We'll coon have to hunting. have a coon Old hunting. Duke and Rose. Yeah, Rose did an all right job. I, she was more I of know, a. We can't. Spoiler alert. I'm and thinking rage. of Duke, Rogue, uh, Rose, Rose, excuse me, and Rage were my three coon hounds. And we will we will do another episode. We'll do an episode only on the coon hounds. On the coon hounds because they're, I mean, we had more adventures with those three dogs than we probably had with all of our other dogs combined. They were just. Adventures. Adventures. That's a good way Ad to put adventures. it. Adventures. So we'll get into that. But I wanted, I thought it was an interesting question about how do you choose which dogs to take on a hunting trip? Because I'm sure most people have the opportunity to take their one or their two dogs on sure. a trip, maybe three, um, but we have 10 dogs. How do we choose who gets to go and who has to stay? It's easy. It's very easy. Okay. So if I am guiding, I'm going to take the largest selection of Finnish dogs that I own. Now, with that being said, I incorporate a couple of the young upcoming dogs. And then we try and mix and match. I have a dog that is seasoned, finished, polished, that does nothing wrong. And is a really good bird finder. And I run them with one puppy or two finished dogs and one puppy. Or one finished dog, one has a season, not quite as finished, and then a puppy. So the puppy is out there. Now, in order for that puppy to come along on a guided hunt, they need to understand a few things. One, how to come when they're called. Two, Bird and guns, they've shot over them. They, they can retrieve birds. They can do the basics as far hey, as birds hey, go. Hey. We just had a video that came out on this. The musts that your dog should know before they go hunting and so, the really freaking nice things that you'd like them to know. And all of our dogs that go on that hunt have all the things, not so just we're not the musts. Talk about, they have the really freaking nice. Exactly. Well. So we're not going to talk about what those that young puppy has. What I'm going to tell you is the puppy has the things that we talked about in that video. Just go down the list. It's about there's two, the video. Well, link. it'd probably be two, three videos back from no three, four. Okay, it's probably like six videos back because five, six. I mean, because we're still we're still on and the we're math. We're in part three. Yeah, so three, six, five, six. Eight, the last ten videos. Five, go watch them all. Yes, within the last ten videos, you don't have to scroll very far. You're gonna find what we recommend a dog have before going hunting. All of our puppies have those things, the the must haves and the really freaking nice things. So we have that covered, but they have zero wild bird experience typically, but they can go up there. They're not really adding to, but they're not taking away from the hunt. That's key. If they're out there causing problems. They can't be out there. So those things happen and they gain a ton of experience in that. Now, if I am going by myself or if I'm going with cat or I'm going in a small group, the dogs that I take are the young, inexperienced, know nothing. Now I include the other dogs with that. The dogs that spend the most time on the ground, period, are the puppies because they need the most experience. And I need them to learn that as quickly as possible so they can go in the guide string beginning of next year. Yes. So that's a really good question. And we put a lot into the thought process of who gets to go, who gets to stay. And there was one year when Rex was still a young dog. 
because he's going to be 15 this season. He's not going to South he, Dakota. He yeah. didn't go last year, except for on our own personal hunt. He didn't guide, though. No, he went up and hunted three days with us in South Dakota, did fantastic, pointed a few birds, retrieved a few birds, had a blast. But definitely... But he can't keep up for 30 days. No. Back in the day, so not too long ago, I think he was probably 12 still, um, but Ethan took every single dog, every single dog, I and didn't have those that I didn't take. My buddy Mike had, who he guides a little bit too. And yes, um, so Ethan was gone for three plus weeks in South Dakota, and I didn't have a single dog to sleep with or hang out with in the house. And I didn't have Aiden yet, so I was like going crazy. Uh, the girls in the kennel at the time, because they were all girls that were working for us, I think were about tired of me because I would go out and I would talk their ears off while we're training and doing stuff because I didn't have my dogs. I didn't have my husband <laughs> and I was just going stir crazy. So um, there will always be now the written rule, unwritten rule, my rule. I will always have at least one dog that stays with me. We got Grandpa Rex this year because he's definitely not going, but um, he's getting older. So we'll see how long um, he is also still around to keep me company at home. But I've always got to have somebody at home with me because I can't, I can't do it without a dog or a husband. So. Guys, those were absolutely great questions. We appreciate all of y'all that sent us in questions. We appreciate everybody that subscribes to the channel. And Folks, we're sorry if we didn't get to some of these questions because I had a lot more that I wanted to. Yes. So if and we if, missed it. If we missed it. Ask it again through YouTube comments next time. YouTube comments only. Or There's nobody's still watching at this point, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, what we, we get, you know, like a little bit of retention rate. Or if we missed you and you really want your question answered, check out our online dog training community on Patreon. It's www.patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. And we will get to those questions on the daily. If you did make it through the end here, and you can prove me wrong by typing finished in the comments below, and we will give that some love. Yes, because not many people make it to the end. I'm out of bourbon folks, and we're out of time. I'm the guy with the pink gun. And I'm Kat the dog trainer. And we'll see you in the next video.